What up everyone, back with another video. This time around we have a review, and that is of Todd McFarlane's Spawn Kickstarter campaign figures. Something that I just recently got, people have been getting them over the past few weeks, I just got mine, and we're going to do a review of them. I'm a huge Spawn fan, he is my number one favorite superhero ever, he always has been, always will be, so I was very excited to get these, but... I shall judge them unbiasedly and give them a proper review. As always, we have the four score system based on the concept and design, execution, price, and collectability. So we will go through those four, talk about them a little bit, and then talk a little bit about just the future of McFarland Toys and what we have to look forward to. So without wasting any time, let's just jump right into it. I'll have to figure out the best way to show them. I'm not sure if video or pictures is going to be best to show the best quality, but something will be happening right now that you'll be looking at. Uh, so let's start off with the concept and design. How well it's designed, the idea of it. And for this, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Absolutely fantastic job. But we really wouldn't expect anything less from McFarlane Toys. That's what made them great. That's what got me into it as a kid. The concepts and the designs of them were absolutely fantastic. They did things that no other toy company did back then and that most still aren't doing to this day. Things that are just unbelievable at a really reasonable, remarkable price. So that is to be expected. I wouldn't have expected anything less than a 9 out of 10 from this company, nor would the fans. And that's why there was a Kickstarter and that's why it did so well and sold so many. So a little minor things to touch on from this. <clears throat> Things that I'm not personally a fan of, I guess it didn't affect the score per se, but things that I'd like to touch on. I noticed in this figure, there's three of them by the way, but I'm just going to say this figure because it's pretty much the same one, the same body at least, and it's that they put a lot of joints and connecting pieces in there. There are a lot of movable parts, there are a lot of opposable parts. Now to most people that would be seen as a good thing, more opposable, more better, like why not? For me personally, I don't really like that. What I liked about McFarlane Toys, as you can see, there's some right over here on the wall. Over there. <clears throat> I liked them because they weren't posable. When I got them first as a kid, I liked them to be posable because they were action figures and I liked playing with them. But as I got older, I started to appreciate that they weren't posable. They were more like statues. They were like small statues. And that's my personal taste, and it's been that way for a long time. I don't like action figures. I like still statues. So the closer you are to that, the more I'm going to like it. And honestly, I think that's more the direction they should go in. And things that are more posable are geared more towards kids, which is fine, but I don't think Spawn's really geared towards kids. And I don't think figures like this, the high-end action figures, are really for kids for the most part. I don't think anyone was getting this Kickstarter campaign or buying this online for five or six hundred bucks for their kids to play around with. I'm pretty sure anyone that got this is an avid collector or a fan and is either keeping them in the box or putting them on still display. So it's good that they have some posability so you can put the identical figures in different positions, but I just feel like they went a little too much into the posability of it. It's just not necessary and that takes away from the overall look and design. One other minor thing that I wasn't a huge fan of was the little um, wood nail figure thing. So I remember him talking about it, that this is supposed to be a replica, not a replica, but a reinvention of the original spawn, the very first spawn he ever did, and what he had was a wood plank with a nail sticking out of it, and it was pretty cool. So I like what they did here, they have this more of this wood like bat kind of thing with a bunch of rusty nails sticking out of it, that I like. Then they have this one big solid metal hook coming up the top, that I didn't like so much. Not that it looks bad, it's not a bad design or anything like that, but it just is kind of random, because what is that supposed to be? I like that they go with a more realistic route, McFarlane's always done that, so that's what I like about the rest of it. It's just, it's raw, it's real, it's this piece of wood with a bunch of nails sticking out of it, because that's what Spawn would use to beat the shit out of someone with. And then they have this big, like, perfectly curved little metal saw hook thing. And it's like, well, what is that? That just kind of stood out to me as not really fitting in place. I think they should have kept that out and then just done the wood part with the nails. I think that would have been more fitting in line with the original figure, and I think that would have been more in line with this action figure, too. It would have just would have fit better. This hook right here just seems very out of place. Again, not that it's bad. It's not that I dislike it. It just, it just seemed kind of random and out of place. Real minor stuff. That's what, what I'm saying is 9 out of 10, so minor, minor things that I noticed to touch on. No big deal. Now let's go into the execution. This is going to get a 9 out of 10 as well. 
And if you don't know, execution is the sculpt, the paint, how functional it is, how well the concept and design turned out. As far as the paint goes, very well done. They put a lot of paint in there, which I appreciate, because that's something that McFarland figures haven't been doing recently. I've been keeping up with them, and they've done a lot of different figures, especially some of the DC ones, and the concept and design on them is really great. It looks really cool. But the execution is very poor in the sense that they're very stingy with the paint. They often just use the colored plastic, and there's so much detail in there in the sculpt, but it's lost because it's all one solid color. If they don't do like they do on this figure and add some paint into the creases just to give it some gradient and texture, you lose so much of the sculpt in there and I think that's a real shame. So that's something that the modern McFarlane figures haven't been doing that I think they should, but luckily this one did. This one, even though the cape is just a red cape, they actually put some paint in the creases to give it some gradation because it doesn't look, doesn't have enough depth of feel when it's just one solid color. And the same thing with like the muscle texture and things like that. It's not just carved in there. They actually give it some paint and give it some gradation to show more depth, which that I appreciate. And even small little details like on the skull or on the head without the mask, there's really details in the scarred skin and the stitches in there. So they really got in there with the detail, which I appreciate. So detail on the sculpt is something they've always done. Detail on the paint is something they've been lacking recently, but they have done on this one. And then all kinds of things, just like the box right here. This is fantastic. There was three different ones, and they actually made them three different colors. They have the classic, the modern was in green, and then the artist proof was in a silver color. And this slides up, and this opens out, and there's like a nice ribbon in there. The, the presentation of it is just very beautifully done. It's really fantastic. And then besides this box, what's also cool about it is the container they have it in it looks like a carded action figure, but it does open up and close back up again. If any of you watched my, hey, quit it. If any of you watched my review on the world's smallest figures, that was a complaint I had where they, we stop. Hey, a complaint I had where they put it in a plastic case, but they sealed it up so you couldn't open it and close it again. You had to cut into it. This one, they, I don't know if they could say they learned from that, but this is the opposite side of it, where they put it in a plastic container, a hard plastic container, but they made it so you can pop it open, remove the action figure, or put it back in and pop it back in without damaging anything. That I appreciate, because although I love the classic style, see up in the, in the corner here, the classic cardboard and plastic style of action figure, I like that, but you have to decide whether... <laughs> You have to decide whether you want to keep it in the package or you want to take it out. Because once you rip the cardboard, then there's no going back on that. So I like that they put it in a resealable clamshell. That was something nice that they did. And I appreciate that because I decided to take mine out. I want to put mine on display. I don't want to keep them in there. And then the other thing is something like the comic. They also put that in a special container too. Where it's in a plastic with a cardboard back to hold the comic in. So you can actually slide it out and read it. But you can slide it back in and then put it back in on display. So I really like that they gave those options. It's little things that show appreciation. So you don't have to decide whether you want to keep it in the box or take it out. So very well done. Execution very nicely done. Uh, one thing about the execution that I noticed that wasn't so great is because they put so many posable parts in there, they put so many joints and things like that in there that the replacement parts were didn't really fit right and they were very hard to get in. So many of them came with replacement heads. It was really hard to get them on and off. One that it was just so difficult and when you finally did it didn't quite fit right the seam didn't really line up so that's where something like the execution it, it got a minor point off because it just didn't fit that well it didn't line up that well and that's where I was saying I'm kinda against all these opposable parts because they're just not really necessary I'd rather it look seamless and just have the one head or part than all these different parts and not look like it matches now let's talk about the price as I was uh, gonna take a dump right now don't do it. Oh boy. And here it comes. <laughs> I waited until he was asleep actually and he woke back up just so we can take a very tiny dump on camera. Thank you Wolf. I'm slow, so glad that you're my puppy. On to the price. Ignore this. Uh, so two things we have to mention here. So there's the original price that people paid and then there's the price that it costs now. And I explained this before, the price that I'm giving the score on is the price it is now. 
because unfortunately, I missed out on this Kickstarter campaign, as did a lot of people. So we can't base it off that price because that's not a price we can buy it at. And just since we're on the subject, if anyone ever finds out about cool Kickstarter campaigns, please let me know on the channel because I would have bought that up in a second. I would have totally been on board that Kickstarter campaign, but I literally missed it by like a month. By the time I found out about it, it was already done. So we can't judge based on that price. We have to judge based on the resale price of what it's at now on eBay. So that's the score we're going off of. And for that reason, the price on this gets a 5 out of 10. The original price of this was $160. $160 on the Kickstarter campaign, which is a fantastic deal and is totally worth it. But now you have to pay around $500 to get the set of three um, on eBay. That's around what it's going for. We'll go a little bit more into that in a second. So that's what I have to base the price off of. It's still worth it. Like it's still worth it to get those figures for that price, but it is very expensive Consider they just are action figures. They're very well done, but the price that the Kickstarter people paid was just a little bit above what they probably would have sold in stores. They probably would have, since it was 160 divided by three, yeah, they paid a little more than they probably would have cost in stores. So that would have been a good price, but now since we have to pay this overprice, that brings down that score significantly. And... 5 out of 10 because it's it's worth it, but just barely. If it cost any more, I probably wouldn't have bought it. And I'm like the biggest Spawn fan ever, but it's selling pretty well. Now we're going to go on to the collectability. And for those of you who don't know, what that is, is what it's going to be worth over time. Is this something worth get collecting? Is it something that's going to increase in value? Is it something that's going to decrease in value, stay the same? That's the collectability. Is it something worth collecting? And for that, I'm only giving it a 5 out of 10 as well. And here's why. So since I've been monitoring the price, the prices have been coming down uh, pretty significantly. When I first started seeing it, the prices were over $600. Then when I was looking into it, like purchasing it myself, it was around the five to $600 range. And then it became down to 500 and now below four, below five. And now, uh, as probably by the time I'm posting this, it's more like in the four to $500 range. And the prices have been coming down. Why is that? because they made a ton of these. There were, I got the number, 23,000 backers on that. This Kickstarter campaign set a bunch of world records. I can't remember how many it was exactly, but set various world records on Kickstarter. So that's great because there are so many supporters of Spawn out there, but bad for collectors because there's just a ton of them out there. And how Kickstarter works, as many people wanted them and gave them money, that's how many they're going to make. So if 10 billion people order it, there's going to be 10 billion figures out there. And when they finally come, they're going to be worthless because there are just so many of them made. And the I have a feeling that many, if not most of the people that backed it, were doing it just to resell because there are thousands of them out there for sale. The second people started getting them delivered in the mail, they popped up all over eBay and various other sales sites. There are thousands of them for sale. So it seems like many, 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 many people bought them just to resell. Whether they bought another set for themselves to keep and one to sell or just to resell, that's hard to say, I'm not really sure. But for that reason, that's gonna bring down the collectability significantly. And something else to touch on, regular spawn figures, as you see in the very top corner, I can't reach it over there, but it's way in the top corner there, my carded spawn figures. Those are just now starting to really increase in value. And again, not much. And the, why is that? It's because, not because people didn't like them, people love spawn. And people that watch my channel are huge spawn fans, they tell me all the time. And people love to collect those figures. The reason they're not worth that much is because they made so many. Spawn number one was one of the highest selling comic books of all time to this day. It's a very popular figure, so they made millions of those figures, literally millions. And that has nothing to do with the quality. They were great quality, but when there are that many of something out there, they're just not worth a lot because you can find them everywhere. Even these are almost 20 years old. Some of them are 20 years old and possibly older. And 20 years later, they're just barely increasing in value again because there were so many of them made and I see the same problem with this figure there were just so many of them made very well done 
very high in quality. Many people want them. Many people will buy them, but they're not going to go away for a very long time. So you have to see the pattern repeating itself. Because they made so many, it doesn't matter how famous that character is, there's too many on the market and the market gets flooded. Same with this Kickstarter campaign. They made so many of them that the market got flooded, so people bought them up quickly and sold them quickly, and that's why we're seeing the price go down, 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 down. And we're going to probably keep seeing it go down until it's probably in that three to four hundred dollar range where everyone that was wanted one already bought one second hand and the price is going to keep coming down so if you're looking into getting a set of these figures i'd wait a little bit longer and wait for that price to go down i'm guessing don't quote me on this probably in that three to four hundred dollar range because i saw some selling this week in that four to five and it was that five to six six to seven blah -de blah -de blah so that's wait for it to come down a little bit i should mention the set i did get it was in that four to five hundred dollar range. Um, I did not get the autograph set though, so that's something worth mentioning. Not a big deal. All of the extra was was a little plate that was autographed by Todd McFarlane. I didn't really care about that. I've met Todd a couple times. I've I have many signatures of his on various items, so I didn't think that was a big deal, and it wasn't worth an extra two hundred bucks for. So that's what I'm basing it off of. Those prices I gave is the one that's not the autograph set, just the set of three with all the additional heads, with all the additional comics and stuff like that. So anyway, like I was saying, collectability only a five out of ten because I don't see this going up in value anytime soon. It will eventually. But it's going to be a very, very, very long time because as I've said in previous videos, the collectible market is at a peak right now. It has skyrocketed in the past year. So people are buying stuff up left and right and they are holding on to it. The only way things like this are gonna go up in value is if things get lost or destroyed over time, bringing the overall number of them that exist to a smaller amount and thus bringing up the value. Same thing with those carded spawn figures. It's just 20 years later, Things like uh, basic things like moths and oxidation in the plastic start to ruin these figures so they're st finally starting to deteriorate and kind of die off and there's less and less of them with each passing year. And it will be like decades before these actually start dying off. So don't expect them to increase in value anytime soon. So that is my advice to you. One thing to note about the collectability of this figure is that we don't know what the future plan of this figure is going to be. Um, so what I mean by that is there was a Kickstarter campaign for this figure and they released this figure, but I can't imagine that being the end of it. Uh, Todd McFarlane is notorious, has a bad habit of starting things and not finishing them. Getting up all this hype because something's going to happen and then just kind of letting it dwindle away. They already did this. They had did the Spawn Rebirth series like I think two or three years ago and they were going to do a whole line of Spawn figures. They released two and then they just quit. It just kind of disappeared. And they were really popular. They sold well. They sold plenty of them. But for some reason they just stopped. And then we went back to this Spawn Kickstarter campaign of another Rebirth of Spawn redoing it again. And we don't know where this is going to lead. We don't know if they're going to re-release this to the public afterwards. They already created the mold of this, so we don't know if we're going to see this figure in stores. If we do, it may be the same thing. It may be a very watered-down, cheaper version of it. Things like the paint may not be as detailed. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, um, some of the McFarlane figures aren't as well painted. So they may re-release this figure then, and then just have less paint or less items or less heads on there or something like that so if they do release that to the public that will drive the price of this down significantly as well so they haven't really talked about that but i can't imagine them going through all this trouble and just not doing more with it so that's to be seen and that may affect the value as well averaging all these scores together overall we get a 7 out of 10 but keep in mind this overall score is not for everyone some people don't care about the collectability and if it's going to be worth money over time. They just care about the figure itself and if it's something they should check out. So if you only care about certain scores, only take those into account. Don't worry about the other scores. Just pick and choose the ones you like. I'm just giving an overall score to make it simple. So that's the basic idea of it. Let me know what you thought about it. Did you buy this figure? Did you buy it secondhand? How much did you pay for it? Were there any complaints you had about it? Were there things you specifically did like about it? I didn't go too much in the specific details of the figure, just a general overall thing, because as I've stated before, I'm trying to keep these videos shorter. I'm doing terrible, but I'm trying my best. And Woof's being horribly distracting. So let me know your thoughts and comments in the description, or uh, in the 
Let me know your thoughts and comments in the comments below, and we'll talk about it there. Because Wolf is driving me nuts. Go to sleep, boy. Other than that, thank you for watching and supporting. Uh, we have a, another regular video, and then we're going to have Mortal Kombat coming up, so things to look forward to. And I keep saying I'm still trying to find the groove of this channel, trying to find what works out best. So please send me your feedback, and let's adjust accordingly. And other than that, I'll go clean up Wolf's dumps, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching and supporting. Love you all. Peace.